Here I've got a nice problem from the 2004 French team selection test. So these tests are given to select members of the International Math Olympiad team. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Our goal is to determine if we can find a natural number n such that the set n, n plus 1, n plus 2, all the way up to n plus 17 can be decomposed into a disjoint union, which I'll call A disjoint union B, in a way so that the product of the elements of A is equal to the product of the elements of B. And I'll just call this product of elements A, little a, and then this product of elements B, little b, just for an ease of notation. Now, after we solve this, I'm going to like look into what went into writing this problem and maybe see if we can generalize it a little bit, or at least write a similar problem afterwards. Okay, so let's get started. So let's first of all kind of determine what is so important about 17. Well, let's notice, depending on where we start, either one or two elements from this set will be divisible by 17. Obviously, if we want all of the elements from A to have the same product of all of the elements from B, we need two elements of this set to be divisible by 17 and split them into those two disjoint sets. But if you play around with this a little bit for a couple of values of n, you'll see that this seems to be impossible. So there must be something else going on with this number 17. And I think maybe the best way to look at this is that if we take 17, the next closest prime, which is larger, is 19. And now we can see that at most one, in other words, zero or one elements of the set n, n plus one up to n plus 17 is divisible by 19. So let's write that as our first fact. So fact number one, so either zero or one element of our set n, n plus 1, n plus 2, all the way up to n plus 17 is divisible by 19. So for example, if the number n is equal to 1, none of these is divisible by 19 because we have 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 18. But if we start with the number 2, well, then this last one will be divisible by 19. If we start with the number 3, the one that is next to last will be divisible by 19. Okay, so this breaks us into a couple of cases which are pretty obvious now because we only have two possibilities. So let's say our first case is, I'll call it case 1, and that's actually this second one here. In other words, exactly one element is divisible by 19. But now we see that that's a problem. So if that element is in A, so if it's in A, then we see that 19 divides little a using our notation over there, but 19 does not divide little b. And that's because 19 is a prime and B is built out of things that are all not divisible by 19. But if 19 divides A and not B, then A cannot be equal to B. And then we've got a similar subcase if our element is actually in capital B instead. So that means we're really into this case zero, if you will, which is none of the elements of n all the way up to n plus 17 are divisible by 19. And so that's the case that we'll work on. So we'll bring that up to the top and then also review a couple of nice tools that we'll need in order to finish this proof off. So, so far we've determined that in order for this to be possible at all, 
Our set n, n plus 1 up to n plus 17 cannot contain any elements that are divisible by 19. And now here's a quick review of some results, which you can find in my number theory playlist if you'd like, that we'll use to finish this solution. The first is Wilson's theorem, which says for all prime numbers, p minus 1 factorial is congruent to minus 1 mod p. Okay, and then we'll take something from the notion of quadratic residues. Quadratic residues studies when certain numbers are perfect square mod n. So there is an x, which is an integer, such that x squared is negative 1. In other words, negative 1 is a perfect square modulo p, if and only if p is congruent to 1 mod 4. And this is if p is an odd prime. So if p is 3 mod 4, then this congruence has no solution. Okay, so now that we've done this review, let's get rid of this and then we will look at the solution. Okay, so now that we've done all of this stuff to get ready, the solution is actually quite short. So let's by way of contradiction. And you might say, well, how do we know that we should be working towards a contradiction in the first place? In other words, how do we know that this seems to be impossible? Well, let's remember at the beginning of the video, I said that we should start off with some experimentation, which I'll let you do on your own. That makes it seem like this kind of thing is impossible in the first place. That should give you a good guess. And this, since this comes from a problem-solving contest type situation, you know that it should be fairly easy to come up with what the answer is, but not the solution. So the answer should be easy to find, which is no, but the solution should use a couple of tricks. Okay, so by way of contradiction, we will suppose that A is equal to B, but what does that mean? That means that A times B is the same thing as N times N plus one, all the way up to N plus 17. Okay, now let's reduce this all mod 19. Well, first of all, since A is equal to B, we can say that we have A squared on the left-hand side. And notice we get this product of all of these numbers because these represent the product of elements from these two disjoint sets which union to this thing right here. So we've got A squared over here because A is equal to B. And then over here we have 1 times 2 times 3 all the way up to 18. You might say, how do we know that? Well, notice that the only possibility is that N is congruent to 1 mod 19. And that's because if n is congruent to anything else mod 19, then one of these will be a multiple of 19, which we showed was impossible already. Okay, but now we can rewrite this, just keeping in mind that we're working mod 19, as 18 factorial modulo 19. But then by Wilson's theorem, that's negative 1 mod 19. But look, we've shown that negative 1 is a perfect square mod 19, but that's a contradiction because 19 is congruent to 3 mod 19. And by our previous fact, we know that negative 1 is not a perfect square mod p if p is congruent to 3 mod 4 this should be. Okay, so now that we've got this solution, let's maybe write a quick other version of this problem and then maybe brainstorm how we could fix it up a little bit more. Okay, so now that we've seen a solution, let's see how we can maybe hack this problem and the solution that we saw to create something that's a little bit more general. I think maybe the slightest change would be to keep everything the same and change this number 17. And in my mind, the most obvious way to do that is to end with n plus p. In other words, we have the set n, n plus 1, n plus 2, all the way up to n plus p, where p and p plus 2 are twin primes. In other words, they're both primes, and p plus 2 is congruent to 3 mod 4. So that means p is congruent to 1 mod 4. So that's our situation right here. We really need this p plus 2 to be 3 mod 4, so that when we do our Wilson's theorem kind of thing, we get something like negative one cannot be a perfect square. 
Okay, so as an example, we could have n, n plus 1, n plus 2, all the way up to n plus 29. That's because 29 is 1 mod 4, so 31, the next prime, is 3 mod 4. Okay, now here's a little bit bigger of a change, although you could maybe change this one a bit more, but here's a bigger change, which is a trickier, and that is to have a set n, n plus 1, all the way up to n plus m. You'd have to tweak that number m, where it decomposes into the disjoint union of three sets, and somehow along the way you contradict something being allowed to be a perfect cube or not. So I'll let you guys think about this one a little bit more. Maybe post in the comments if you come up with anything based off of this proposed change. And that's a good place to stop.